Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today, we're going to check out a PRS SE guitar that is a Zach Meyer signature. So you might be asking yourself, huh, why is this part of our Halloween October month? Well, Zach Myers, Michael Myers, close enough, close enough, right? <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and crack this thing open. So this started as a new Guitar Day purchase, but it was later abandoned, but I decided to buy this anyways because all the other guys were reviewing it. I might as well get my take on it too. So straight out of the box, we get this like beautiful brown and black gig bag. It says SE on our little pocket there. You've got multiple handles to hang on to it. Double back strap, so it'll be able to stay on your back. But before we learn a little bit more about Zach Myers, let's go ahead and uh, just grab our first take impressions on this PRS SE model. Well, it's got a built-in afro, heck yes! <laughs> That's just silly enough, I've never seen it. I love it, it is a built-in afro. <laughs> we'll have to shave them. I like that, I've never seen a guitar company do that. It is custom molded exactly for this guitar. I'd be curious to see if PRS has less headstock breaks in shipping because they use these or not. And then of course we get the typical one on our toggle switch, but oh, look at that. So they call this Meyer Blue and it's, it's an interesting color. The best way to describe this, in my opinion, is it appears like a really stark, like ocean-like blue in most people's videos or photography, but in person, there's almost like a, a natural hidden underneath it. But Zach Myers, if you're not familiar, he is from the band Shinedown, and he designs his signature guitars normally for somebody who doesn't necessarily know his work or knows his name. He just wants a guitar that can be played by everybody. And so far, I'm kind of feeling what he's putting down here because this is just a really nice feeling single cut guitar here. So let's talk a little bit more about him. His first signature guitar from PRS was an SE in a royal blue finish that was all over the guitar. That had a really cool like natural binding to it as the maple cap was exposed. And it was just like a lighter blue than everything else. But it was also a wrap tail. It had three uncovered humbuckers on it for like that Ace Fraley vibe, he said. It had a striking black ebony fretboard with a kind of a cool, interesting 12th fret inlay on it. And it had a matching headstock to boot. If you like blue guitars, you like that guitar. But apparently there are some negative Nancys out there talking down that they didn't like the middle pickup. So he refined it a little bit more just to make it a great guitar that just happened to bear his name. He decided to make it a semi-hollow with an F-hole. Only two pickups this time, zebra bobbins to appease fans. He swapped out the back finish on the neck to a satin neck. He decided not to have a matching headstock, just to have like a natural one because the body was more of like a Trampus green color. And he was just trying to give private stock vibes and apparently had glow in the dark tuner tips. Pretty cool. But in this band Shine Down, they have a great mix of clean and dirty tones within their songs. And if you're not familiar with them, they've done great cover songs. I seriously think their version of Simple Man is the best version. Then they also did The Sound of Madness, but they have some pretty killer original ones. I really like Diamond Eyes from them. Brent Smith's vocals are legendary in that band in my eyes. So to continue on his signature guitar legacy, he brought out this new one. Now, essentially all they've done this time is again, they were trying to give it like a private stock vibe for under a thousand bucks. And honestly, I would say that top really does look good. I mean, it's just a veneer top and like it doesn't have the same finish as a private stock or anything like that. At the end of the day, this is a PRS SE stands for student edition. Looks like these guys are being made in Indonesia yet today. But they really just changed our color up here. They blacked out our plastics, no more zebra bobbins. And I gotta say, I prefer this color over the, the greenish one. And I enjoy the fact that they not only brought back the matching headstock, but they put the flame maple veneer on the top there too. But just as far as the feel of this, I mean, it's got that comfort cut there, but it's still kind of bulky feeling at the same time, like it didn't become too thin. The neck has this satin finish, which works well on this but everything else is still gloss, including like the face of the headstock. Even the back of the headstock is still gloss. Like they just made a gloss stinger, which was not something I was expecting. That's just a, a small thing that makes this kind of interesting because if this wasn't a signature model guitar, they probably 
probably wouldn't have bothered to do something like that. There's a good angle where you can see that gloss stinger. And then, of course, the back of the body is also all gloss, so I would say, yeah. Yeah, that feels nice. Kind of a in-between neck. It's a little bit on the thinner side, but it's really rounded. We'll get all those profiles and dimensions on the workbench here in a minute. But based on first impressions, I'd say I'm happy with this. These were originally 829 bucks when they came out. Uh, they just recently had a price increase to 850 which isn't as bad as many other guitars. But I'm not seeing any other paperwork. But we do get some sort of a truss rod adjustment tool in there, so that's always nice. All right, troglodytes, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the Zach Myers guitar, let's go ahead and check out these pickups. So, this is what it looks like on the back side. It's got a sticker that says CW and a whole bunch of other stuff. The pickup itself is pretty lightweight. And PRS calls these the 245S pickups. The bridge one, you don't have a lot of lead length, so I'll just show it to you briefly here. But in the bridge pickup cavity, it says ZM3, likely standing for Zach Myers, the third one that they're doing of his signature, and then I can't read whatever else this stuff says. But in the neck pickup cavity, you can see that extremely long neck tenon that's in here and all the wires coming from our toggle switch over here. So pretty clean looking routes here. But here we can see the cross section of the body. So this has a plain maple top that has a figured maple veneer over top of it. So yes, it is a maple top, but the maple top doesn't look like this. This is just that paper thin sheet over top of it to make it look beautiful. But it's really PRS's staining technique that, you know, really makes this look like a higher end guitar than it does. My only complaint so far is I hate the way these pickups look on this guitar because the PRS's that we've been looking at, the more high end ones, they have those really low profile rings where the height adjustment springs are actually recessed into the ring kind of like these guys are. And even those ones kind of look a little taller than normal. They stand out and just the, the uncovered black, it just looks cheap to me. I mean, it's great. I finally had enough high-end PRSs. I can notice those small differences between the student edition ones and the full-on PRS. Is it a big deal at the end of the day? No, it's, it's just something I noticed. I really think the zebra bobbins on this one would have looked cool or creamed out plastics, but you know, it's an artist guitar. He gets to choose and he wanted blacked out. You certainly can't make everybody happy. So he's just trying to make a multitude of people happy through his various releases. So let's go ahead and check our readings here. So it looks like our bridge pickup is going to be pretty hot. 9.56 K ohms, neck position measuring 7.94 and our middle position at 4.33. Okay. Interesting. So not quite PAF, but a little bit hotter than that, but not overly hot. Kind of makes sense with his very diverse music within his band. But now the thing I love most about PRS is their intonatable rap tail pieces. I love the way these things feel to play. I mean, try one for yourself. You'll kind of understand what I'm talking about. It's just rap tails feel different, and when you get the big brass saddles on top of that, it's just a nice experience, and I don't use trems too much, so <laughs> I like that it's that. But you'll notice you've got your controls like this with these clear knobs. That's his signature thing. He likes the clear knobs on these. But you've got your two volumes and two tones. But you have to remember, it's neck volume, neck tone, bridge volume, bridge tone. So if you're used to Gibson's, it's not neck bridge, it's neck bridge. Another small thing you'll notice is the uh, the more metric in style toggle switch. Once you know what a switch craft looks like that is flush mounted versus the top mounted one, it's just something you notice, but beautiful top on this. I really enjoy the color. It almost looks better in camera though. Like in person, it doesn't quite appear as dark blue as sometimes it appears here. So maybe check one of these out at a store near you. But at the time of recording this, I was actually having a hard time finding these in the stores. But hey, look at this. Natural back and sides. Love guitars like that. But I suppose we should uh, break out the endoscope and see what we can find in this semi-hollow guitar here. So let's dive into the sound hole here. Okay, so what it looks like we have here is there's a center block in it, but this is not one continuous chamber. 
So this is just the chamber on the F hole side. So we'll get to look at the other side when we take that back control cavity off. So they are separated chambers. In fact, you can't actually even see the toggle switch. So that means it's likely something like this, a chamber right there. So it doesn't actually expose your pickups. It doesn't expose this, it doesn't expose that. So if you drop something in here, your only option to get it out is to fish it out or shake your guitar because you can't just use your backplate cheats. At least that's what it seems like right now. But that's a mahogany body with the maple top. Let's move on to the mahogany neck with the rosewood fretboard. Now this might not be the prettiest rosewood I've ever seen, but it's rosewood and it feels so smooth. Like compare this to what Epiphone offers you at a very similar range on their high-end Les Pauls. They've got Pau Ferro and many of the frets on those are very scratchy. Now I'm not gonna say these are perfect either, but first impressions, this is a very quality guitar. It felt nice to play when I strummed it a little bit. And hey, we even have our Perloid birds in here. Zach is a big fan of those. So, so far, very impressed with the feel of this neck fretboard and all that. This is a 24 and a half inch scale length. Then I get a nut width of 1.69 inches and that increases to 2.07 by the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.89. And at the 12th, 0.96. PRS calls this the wide neck profile. On the contour gauge, here's what that looks like at the first fret and the 12th fret. Definitely lives up to the name but you really don't feel that C shape to it. I mean, it definitely feels as the name implies. So if you like those wider feeling necks, you're gonna like this. Not so much if you like the big chunky necks. As far as the face of the headstock goes, once again, you do have that maple veneer that it's all flamed over. Looks pretty cool. You can see the Paul Reed Smith SE logo there. Now the truss rod cover does indeed have his name on it. Not two in your face, just Zach Myers. If you don't like that, flip it over to the other side then you don't have anything on it. But the plastic isn't quite as nice on that side. Well, it's kind of cool with that off. You can see the wood that they use to cap off the truss rod right there that you don't normally see. Now the black tuner tips, interesting choice. I kind of wish you would have left it with the glow in the dark ones. That way I could have done that for the review and demo, but who knows? Maybe I'll check out the other ones if I enjoy playing this, especially his first one. That thing's kind of cool. And now we move on to the back. Something that you can't really appreciate about this guitar from the photos are all the contours this thing has. So the back edge of this guitar has a curve. It doesn't come to a straight up point anywhere. It's all rounded off. Even the top is like that. You guys kind of see what I'm talking about? It just comes curved off to the edge. So there's no like hard ridge. I mean, there's a little bit of one due to the binding on the bottom, but I, I think you guys understand what I'm saying. And you can see it right here. It just kind of tapers off. And the back is no exception to that. So that's all rounded off. You even have a comfort cut back here, but then you've got your control cavities here. So this is semi hollow in the fact that it has a little small chamber that we saw there and it's an F hole. There is no chambering on this side unless you count a normal control route as chambering. So here you can see the pots that are in this one. Doesn't look like anything too fancy, but they're nice Korean made pots. It's all shielded off. But then in the pickup selector cavity here, once again, you can see it's not open to that other chamber. It's completely separate, but it doesn't have any shielding. But one thing you might wanna know is the plates sit proud on the body. It's not, flush. I, I don't personally understand that, but uh, okay, that, that's just how it is. That's all I'll say. I would gladly pay $30 more to have those recessed, but that's just me. But you've got your output jack on the side, strap buttons in regular locations, but how many pieces is this body? Looking around the edges, there's at least one seam line right there. I'm guessing that might be another one right there. Like why? That is a strange color. It almost looks like Karina. So yes, three pieces. That's that same one we saw earlier. So one, two, then one more right there for our third. I don't see any more on this side. And here as I'm filming the uh, B-roll shots, I just realized this is actually a two-piece back veneer. Like you can just barely see where they put it right there. It's kind of interesting that they would go through the trouble of putting a veneer on the back and then still doing a two-piece just to hide that multi-pieced body. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cool. It's just an uh, attention to detail type thing, I guess you could say. 
Now it looks like there might have been a small ding in the wood right there before they finished it over. Like that's underneath the finish. That's a little bit sad, but you can't see it if you're looking for it. But then take a look at this. So you know how Gibson has thin binding in the cutaway? These guys have thin binding in the upper bout, I guess. That looks really trippy like that. Like it's just lifting off the guitar, but no, I swear that's how it comes from the factory. Kind of cool. I like to see that plain maple wood grain right there. Would probably look pretty cool with a flame maple top, but as with normal PRS style, you do get that in the cutaway right here as well. So they've got no binding in the cutaway, just the fake kind of binding with the maple cap exposed. Overall, I'd say this looks pretty good with that full on gloss finish. But then just like our body, the mahogany neck, it's a little bit of a lighter color. Some of that is just due to this being a satin finish. And the fact that this is not a nitro satin means it's probably gonna stay pretty satin. I mean, it might buff up a little bit, but I think this will last you a long time if you like that feel. But you'll notice this neck is also three pieces. I love three piece necks. But that is some mahogany wood grain that we are seeing here. And then you get your uh, built by Cortec Musical Instruments Company, Indonesia. Indonesia, you build a very nice guitar. Now these tuners, not gonna lie, they're a bit stiff feeling, like almost a bit too stiff. But I'd rather have that than them be loose. But that's just something I noticed. And there you can see in the reflection of the light that gloss stinger I was talking about. Cool touch. All said and done, this weighs just a little over seven pounds. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how it sounds. All right, let's go ahead and run through our tones. We'll start with our neck pickup here. <laughs> Got a nice tone to it. All right, now let's try that bridge position. Nice sounding guitar at this price point, I would say. How's it sound? Unplugged? Just a little bit louder than a regular guitar. I know people always ask me whenever you have a semi-hollow F-hold guitar, that's just what it goes to. Okay, now let's go ahead and try some distortion. <laughs>
Now that we know all about the Zach Meyer Student Edition PRS guitar, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Pleasantly surprised for what this thing could offer at this price point. I mean, again, I compare it to like the Epiphone 59 because they're kind of similar price points. This one's a little bit cheaper, but honestly, <laughs> it looks a little bit better in my opinion. Now, there's a few things like we talked about on the workbench that you can definitely tell this is not the highest end PRS guitar out there. It really just comes down to the cosmetic appearance of these pickups, the proud back plates, the toggle switch, you can even feel it's kind of one of the not as higher quality switchcraft ones, but that's what's great. If you hate all this stuff, it'd be easy enough to swap that out. But the way that it feels, the way that it plays, I was impressed with that. I think this one needs a little bit of dialing in with our intonation when going up higher in the fret registers, but that's what's nice about this. You can actually do that. <laughs> so if you like the way it sounded in this video and you've checked out the other videos, you're interested in pursuing one of these, I really would suggest trying one of these things out because I was pleasantly surprised with what specs were offered at this price point. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out this guitar. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.